Hi, my name's Paul Oliver, and we're going to talk about Git Beyond the Basics. Let's take your Git skills up a notch. About me, my name's Paul Oliver. You can reach me at paul at enterprisemapper.com. You can tweet at me at it's paultastic. You can throw some Satoshis or Bitcoin my way if your wallet has a few that you want to get rid of. You can just scan that QR code, and I will appreciate it. All right, before we start, I like to get you guys thinking about a little bit of beatboxing because I like to also teach you something you can impress people with. Uh, Beatboxing is not hard. It's really just a control over your lips and mouth and airflow just like you do when you're talking, you know? So really, you just learn a few phrases and you can impress people easily. I'll start with an uh, easy one. It's called Boots Cuts. You just copy along with me, and I know you're going to be embarrassed. You're like, I'm at work. People will see me beatboxing. But they're just going to think you're awesome, right? So let's try this. Boots Cuts. Boots Cuts. Boots Cuts. Now drop the vowels. Boots Cuts. Boots Cuts. Boots Cuts. Boots Cuts. Really easy, right? You can just do that whenever. I mean, you want to get some money, you're on the subway, drop, put your hat on the floor, just start dropping. Boots, cuts, boots, cuts. I don't expect any royalties, but if you wanted to send me some, I'm cool with that. Some vocabulary. Git can be confusing if you're coming at it from another source control tool. For example, TFS or TFVC. In the TFS world, create workspace and get latest is what a git clone is if you want to do a git checkout that is like a switch workspace or branch so take note a git checkout is not like a tfs checkout which would mean hey i have a file i want to edit it and you guys leave a, you know get away from me man i'm i'm editing this file that's not what you would do in git a git checkout is switching your branch so word of the wise that's different tfs when you do a check in or a shelf you would do the same thing in Git with a commit, git commit, except you do that local. That's not on the server, by the way. Uh, git status would be the equivalent of pending changes. Like, I want to see my pending changes. You do a git status. If you want to push your changes up to the server, you would do a git push. That's kind of like a check-in in TFS because it's checking into the server. It's pushing it to the server every time you do a check-in. Uh, in Git, you do a git pull. That's like a git latest version in TFS. Uh, a git sync it does not exist in the git world but it does exist in your visual studio that is doing a push then a pull it don't, like i said it only exists in the visual studio ui you don't see that on the git command line or other git tools that equivalent it's really just doing a check in and get latest version in the tfs world and then a git stash is sort of like a shelf set what we're going to talk about today is git fetch versus git pull. It's important to know the difference. We'll also take you into the rebase world, the CD underworld of git rebase and why you do it. I'll also talk about stashing your changes, why, when, how. And then we're going to talk about undoing things. How do you how do you fix your mess ups? First we want to talk about git fetch versus git pull. This is confusing to people. Why do you do a git fetch? Why do you do a git pull? A lot of us will just do git pull because that's what we see in the tutorials when the git fetch might be a better tool to use. Git fetch will update your local copy of the remote branches. It doesn't change your local branch, so you can just work safely and not have your changes get overwritten with a, with a git pull. And it's safe to do it anytime. Now, a git pull is like a git fetch followed by a git merge. It changes your local branch because it's merging code into what you're working on. And it can be unsafe at times. If you expect your code to stay the same and all of a sudden your git pull you know, kind of switches up your files and changes them, that might be something where you'd consider it unsafe. Here's how a git fetch works. Here's your local repo and then here's your remote repo. And let's do a git fetch and see how the changes from the server, C3 and C2, are now brought over. And you can see how the commit messages are pointed, the the commit branches are pointed to those C3 and C2. Master hasn't changed locally. And uh, you can see foo and uh, origin master are brought down accordingly. It might take you a few times to watch this just to get the concept of it. 
perform the get fetch. Here comes C3, here comes C2. Those are commits, by the way. You can see how origin master and origin foo are pointing appropriately. And your master, C1, your changes haven't been merged in. So it's a, it's a nice, non-destructive way of working with your, so, your source code. Here I'm going to watch it one more time. You can see the get fetch be performed. You watch how those commits come down C3 and C2, and the commit pointers are updated accordingly. Here's how a git pull works. So we're on master, and there's origin master, and now here we bring down C3, and we merge it with C2, and that makes a new commit, C4. Watch this again. On the server, the C3 is brought down, and then we merge C3 into C2, making C4. One more time. You can imagine if you were not expecting your code to change, how a git pull might be surprising behavior. Next beat we're going to cover is baboons, pigs, baboons, pigs. Try it with me. Baboons, pigs, baboons, pigs, and then drop the vowels. Baboons, pigs, baboons, pigs, baboons, pigs, baboons, pigs. Kind of a nicer beat. Gives you a little bit of a double bass drum kind of feel, and then the, the, the pigs really takes it home. Now we're going to talk about git rebase. A git rebase takes a copy of some commits and plops them down somewhere else. Why you'd use this is for a cleaner history. So you can see um, on the on the screen there, there's a lot of merging going on, a lot of diverging branches, and it can make for some tricky history forensics. You want to figure out why did this file change so much or what, what's going on with the code base. So a git rebase would just help with that. I call it git copy plop because really that's what it's doing. It's copying some changes. Uh, from, it's copying the commits from one branch and plopping them down somewhere else. Here's what it looks like. We're going to call git rebase master. You can see how bug fix is brought down, and we just drop it down on, on top of C2. So we're going to do. We're in the bug fix branch. We git rebase master. We're just going to replace C3 on top of C2. We're just copying it and plopping down on top of master. We'll watch it one more time here. Copy C3 on top of C2, and we rebased it. Git copy plop. All right, here's my favorite beat. This is a, a nice one. It takes a little while to memorize the words, but once you do, it's it's a nice effect. So it goes, born to be clever, to clever, to be, to clever, to be, born to be clever, to clever, to be, to clever, to be. And let's try it without the vowels and the L's. To be clever, to clever, to be, to clever, to be, to be, to clever, to clever, to be, to clever, to be. This one is something that you just practice a little bit. You'll get it in a couple days. And uh, each part of these phrases, if you haven't picked up, represent a different instrument in your in your percussion instrument set. So the B's are your bass drum. The born to be, to clever, to be. The B's are the bass kick. And then the T is like your your uh, hi-hat. And the kefa is a like a snare drum with a V making like a, a reef, uh, reverb sound or like a like an echo. So So each word in that phrase has a purpose and an in and it's uh, mimicking an instrument that you would normally hear in a song. Practice it. It'll be awesome. So now stashing. Why would you stash? Well, here's your scenario. You're in the middle of working on some stuff. It's not ready to commit. And your boss comes over and says, drop everything and fix this bug in production. And you ask, do I create a branch from all my half-baked stuff? And the boss doesn't know Git. And they're all, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. And then you say, Paul, what do I do? You tweet at me on it, at It's Paul Tastic, and you send me a message. You're like, what do I do? And I say, no, you stash that stuff, man. You stash those changes, and you can get them back later. Let's see how you do it. So here's a Git stash. We're using git extensions here. I'm just showing you have two things to commit. So let's go down to commands, stash changes. 
here are the changes. Do you want to stash this stuff? I'm like, yeah, let's stash it. I click save changes. We got, it gives you a little quick message. And now it's stashed. And look, commit is empty. There's nothing to commit. You just change your local stuff. And I'm like, whoa, this is cool. I even do command. There's nothing there. The st- did the stash even work? Yeah, you can see the stash and get extensions. It it shows, like, there it is. So I'm like, okay, cool. You know, I got some my stash. So then you can you can do a pull. Let's pretend the, the, the you had to stash because you had a merge conflict or something. And you can, oh, the pull worked now. The stash was successful. But now I want to bring my changes back in. So you go back to get, you know, the command stash changes. And let's just click apply. And bang, we just brought those files back from the light, back from life. I go to uh, commit, and you can see the changes are sitting there, the messy changes. Now I'm ready to commit these changes. So stash is like a way to just temporarily store changes off to the side. You don't have to even commit them. And you know, there's some neat things with stashes that also allow you to um, make a branch from that stash. There's a lot of ways to do a stash, so I just wanted to show you how to do it with a with a tool like Git Extensions. But go back and check on it. You can do it from the command line very easily too. The fourth beat uh, is close to the the last one we just did. It's it's uh, reggae beat though. So we're gonna do born too clever, too clever, born too clever, too clever, to clever, to clever, to clever, to clever. And remember, don't do the L's. That that a lot of people will try to oh born too clever, too clever, born too clever. And that's going to mess you up. The L's aren't just there to help you remember the phrase. You don't actually beatbox with the L's because there's no there's no L drum that I know of that goes, ooh, if you hit it, it goes, ooh, ooh. Maybe like, you know, on a keyboard synthesizer where they throw in like some funky 1983 synthesizer like, ooh, ooh, ooh. But no, we don't do that beatboxing. We just, together, together, boom, together, together. All right, now you're going to undo something because you done mess it all up. Let's talk about how you fix those things. And I, I have a, uh, I made a little tiny URL. You can go and this guy, Seth Robertson, he had like a choose your own adventure. Like, oh, did you make a commit? Did you branch? Did you merge? Click here for more. And it takes you through how to undo it. I'm just going to give you the basics because we're doing an intermediate level. The advanced ninja level course, you know, that's later. So here's here's what you need to know. First off, you need to know the difference between Git reset and Git revert. Git reset rewrites history. You use this when you're local. You haven't pushed your changes yet. I can't stress that enough. You do not get reset on something that's already been pushed. Say it with me. Do not reset changes you have pushed. Do not reset changes you have pushed. Say that another you know, like 20 times on your drive home today as you practice your beatboxing and you're going to be good to go. Get revert is it's like reversing the changes so it's going to play back commits in reverse order so that everybody that connected to the remote repository doesn't have their their repository locally get all jacked up because you resetted it and use this when you push changes already to the to the remote so get reset for local get revert for pushed Let's watch this in action. Here's a git reset. We're on C2. Master's pointing to C2. And we want to reset it. It just takes you back to C1. Uh, I reset and just takes you back up. So essentially, you're just repointing the master branch to a different commit. And that's perfect. If you are local, there is no harm in this. You would push it and everything worked fine. See that git reset pushes you up to C1. Now let's look at a revert. Same thing, but now remember we've pushed this, and that people we can't just set it back to C1 and mess everybody up. So here's a get revert, and look at how it takes C2 and reverses it and puts it back on C2. So C2 is just the opposite. C2 tick is the opposite of C2, and C2 tick would be the code would be identical to C1, if that makes sense. C2 tick would be the opposite would be identical to C1. And then you can push it, and everybody will see kind of like the reversion of what you just revert, you know, you revert, but they wouldn't have a jacked up local repo. All right, that's all I can cover today. My name's Paul Oliver. Email me at paul at enterprisemapper.com. Tweet at me at it's paultastic. 
Bitcoin me at that QR code you got on your screen. Thank you.